Hello, Burr McCarthy here from Boulder Break. Delighted to be doing part two of Fracture Glass. We're going to just do a quick overview of what I did in After Effects and how I got that more saturated, glowy look to the glass. We're not going to go into the nooks and crannies and what bu buttons to push. We're just going to do a quick overview. Let's get started. When you're doing any post in Photoshop, After Effects or whatever program you use, it is worth considering what color bitrate you are using. I'm using 16 bits per channel. The default is 8. 32, probably not necessary. It is worth looking into this because it will greatly change the range of color you can get, especially when you're doing color correction. Everything else is on default. I'm not using any fancy Asus stuff. Um, that is something we can look at in future videos, but Asus is also worth considering, especially if you want to really make your colors pop and make them more accurate. Okay, so we have our fractured glass EXR here. I tried to denoise this with the remove grain in After Effects. If you're using an EXR, it doesn't seem to work. I don't know why. If you know why, please let me know in the comments below. But I don't usually use the remove grains. What I do use is the neat video plugin. It's their plugin called Reduce Noise. It is probably the best noise remover on the market. I would highly recommend it. You can see here and I didn't actually do much with the plugin, but you can get very nerdy and, you know, go into specific values or you can use a generic profile here, which is the button here. If you don't have this plugin, that's fine. I would say that Photoshop's denoiser is perfectly fine. So is Affinity Photos. So after I got rid of the noise or got rid of most of the noise here, I then applied a Lemetri color. And I just messed around and played with these values till I got something that I liked, a little bit frosted. I took down the highlights, I took down the shadows, messed around with the whites and the blacks. I also cooled it a little bit by bringing the temperature down to minus 40 and I upped the saturation. And I brought in a faded film effect. So just to have this off black kind of look and brought up the vibrance. And so I kept that adjustment layer on top of these two layers. You might be asking, what is this second layer? This second layer is a kind of a shimmer or shine that I wanted to create of the glass itself. And what is happening here is we have a just an After Effects normal glow. We've turned off our reduced noise. We can actually delete that. And we've used Venetian blinds and Venetian blinds just kind of chops up an image. It's usually used for like transitions. It's a great way to chop up an image. I did a, a video on Venetian blinds, very underrated tool in After Effects. Um, and I just added a blur here, add more shimmer and shine. I might bring that up to eight. Feather, the glow just brings out the saturation colors a bit more. And then you get that nice look. And I put the blending mode to lighten, opacity to 80. And you're pretty much done there at that point. And then I created this kind of dirt map using two fractal noise plugins and after effects i used a luma mat to invert one on top of the other to just create some more variance in the dirt map then put that to lighten and i put the opacity to 20. then i added an extra dirt map put the blending mode to lighten and it just adds a bit more variance on top of the noise dirt map i made here and that is pretty much it that was what I applied to most of the other renders that we produced. I just copied and pasted this adjustment layer. And sometimes I go in and make a couple of maybe tweaks to it, depending on the colors that I used or the lighting. So you will see that you can just copy and paste those values that you color corrected in number one and just tweak them accordingly, depending on the context of each image that you did or whatever you want to achieve with each one. I also did that kind of a uh, Venetian blind shimmer look with the other images and I got some nice results. So this wasn't your kind of high end uh, post production piece. It was just a very quick fire, dirty way of doing post production. There was no AOVs or kind of any in-depth passes that I did, but it just shows that you can get some nice results really quickly. You don't need to do all the fancy stuff, although doing all the fancy stuff is something we definitely need to do on this channel. I have been putting an AOV tutorial off for a very long time now and that will be coming. I don't know when time is uh, my biggest enemy, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas there of how to do post really quickly. Please remember to like, subscribe. Thank you for watching and goodbye.